Hey there, Touch Designer Programmers. Matthew here. So uh, we're going to take a look at a bunch of exciting things today, but to get started, I wanted to make sure that we took a moment just to talk about why and how might I use Git with Touch Designer. Uh, I know there's a little blog goober about that, but you know, I, I think especially after the summit, I discovered that lots of folks had really, you know, challenging and interesting questions about how you actually work with Git, how you can fight with it, how you can resolve some of the problems that you're experiencing. So here we're going to just step through a quick example of what my workflow looks like and how you might adapt that for yourself. So to get started, I usually like to make my repos starting here on GitHub. You can make them from the command line. There are lots of ways to kind of get into this. What that looks like is that we can use this little handy drop down here at the top. I'm going to create a new repository. I like to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to use just a junk name today because I'm going to throw this repository away after we get started. Example TD get. You can also include a little description. Uh, you can choose to make it public or private. GitHub has changed recently, so now you can make public and private repositories, uh, even with a free account. I'm going to initialize this with a readme because I think having readmes in your GitHub is always really important. And I'm going to go ahead and create this repository. This is going to do all of the initialization and setup. And here I have this page, and what do I do with this? You can work with Git directly from the command line, and the more you practice with it, the more likely it is that you'll actually want to use the command line for some operations. But today, I'm actually going to start with actually just the GitHub client uh, that's available here uh, for free. So what I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and I want to clone a repository, as in I want to grab one here from, uh, from the internet and pull it down to me locally. I happen to know, right, that we called it example td git. That's the one I want. And then I get to choose where I want it to go. I happen to know that I want this one to live in my GitHub folder. And then I've made a little example folder for it, uh, our work here today. So I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, that's what I want you to do. OK, right, great. Clone that. It's going to clone that over here. And I'd like it to open that up in my Explorer so I actually can see that. So what on earth is this? What's this all about? How does this even work? So Git is really a mechanism for us to track our changes and to be able to keep good tabs on what has moved, shifted, and changed in a project from specific commit point to specific commit point. So unlike something like Dropbox or Google Drive that's constantly shaving, saving every single update that you might make, Git gives us the flexibility to give uh, to make really specific inflection points where we want to save a particular version or save a particular set of changes. Why would we do this? Well, we've all played the game in a Touch Designer toe file where we create a new project, we save it, we use the incrementing system, and then all of a sudden we're on toe version uh, 1005. But what exactly was different from the version 1005 from 1000? I know I made a change somewhere in there, but I, I don't remember what happened there exactly. And so this is a way that we can start to actually keep track of what we've altered and changed in our project. We treat it almost exactly like it was just another folder on our computer. So I'm going to go ahead and save my project. File, save as, you know, typical kinds of things here. I'm going to track down that var folder that I put things in, my great git example. And then I'm going to check. Sure enough, there it is. All right. So far, so good. Let's go to our little GitHub client here. And we can see that GitHub's telling me already that, oh, you've changed this file. I can tell that you've changed this file. So when I'm ready to say, hey, I actually want to put this thing into my, um, commit this to my project because it's a, a particular place where I know that it's uh, something that I want to keep tabs on, I can go ahead and say, uh, for example, I added my toe file. I could like make a long, longer description here if I wanted. I'm going to commit this to the master. And then I'm going to do this thing called push to master. So what's happening is that I've committed this. I've recorded that I've made change. But I haven't synced this to the internet yet. 
when I push, I'm syncing this to my other Git server, right? The place where all of the stuff is being managed. So after I push this, what we should be able to see next, you can see here that it's go ahead, it's you know checking everything, making sure everything's up to date. If I swap over to GitHub on the internet, right, the actual website, and refresh this, now I can see, lo and behold, there my tow file's been added. And better yet, if I look at my commit history, I can actually see, ah, there's my message. I added my tow file. I made my initial commit. I can begin to actually track what I've changed and when I've changed it. So that's, that's part of the big idea here is that before long, we'll have a nice big long list of all the changes that we've made. If you're working on a team, you can see who's actually made those changes uh, so you know. And if you needed to, something got broken in a change that you made, you could revert to a previous version that you know was working. 